What is going on, everybody? James Urban Bass Layers, and I'm out in the backyard again working on some baits. And today I'm going to be painting up this guy and this guy, getting this guy ready for its base coat. Dragonfly bait. That one's going to have a jitterbug lip on it, just like these two are. So I think I'm going to paint this one bluegill color and this guy is going to get like a frog type colored pattern and I got the colors that I'm going to use just made a little tray for the colors I'm going to use to bring out so I didn't have to bring everything out here I got some material to wrap this bait with which I'm going to do right now got the alligator clips so I can attach it and I uh, will just do a little quick spray session here for you guys and just show you how I uh, pick these up. Alright, so first things first, I'm just going to wrap this guy. What I did here is I stuck these toothpicks in here and it kind of holds the bait straight and it holds it holds it straight both ways that way it's not really flopping that way when I go to put this material on there I'm going to kind of pull it tight wrap it around the end there clamp that guy down pull it tight wrap it around don't have to worry too much on the belly because I'm not going to hit the belly very much with the uh, sepia color. Now this is where you pull it tight and I'll keep that top flat. I like to start out using the bigger alligator clips and work my way to the smaller ones. really don't need that many alligator clips on here so I think I'm just gonna do like about four of them All right. it's pretty basic it's not that hard to do you can use so many different types of material um, I actually have this old screen here that is from a uh, it's from a tent <laughs> it's an old tent screen and the tent was getting thrown away so I found this and I might cut this up into pieces to use for a scale pattern because that's a really cool scale pattern I don't have that size scale pattern I have some other stuff that I do use and I'm going to do that so anyways we're going to jump onto this guy and throw this on to this guy on here plant anywhere you want to on there Sometimes I'll clamp to the clamps and the material. It's already kind of being held. And uh, there should be. And so now I'm going to take a sepia, Createx sepia. Uh, sepia is the one color. It's not. It's not black. It's not green, it's not brown, it's kind of an in-between, and it is a blending color. This is one of the best colors that I've found uh, watching other painters and stuff. Sepia, man. If you ain't got no sepia when you're uh, airbrushing, you should uh, get yourself some. I've got a little problem here. This is wanting to poke up right there. So what I might do is I might get something and hold that down a little bit, just so that pattern stays on there. So that's kind of hard to get that down in there so we'll see what we can do as we're painting it I may just take one of these little clips and just like push it down and then hit it we'll see out of the way, completely out of the way, so I do not overspray them. <clears throat> so 
So what I'm doing here is you hit it from the top and the overspray will go down and it will barely get on the sides. And you'll get a little bit on the sides there. Get a little bit more paint. This paint does not come out of this bottle well. well. a little bit. Eh. I was going to push that spot down and do it, but it doesn't need it. It's fine. I like to hit at an angle on this so it kind of gets a little bit of everything. Goes down that side and back right there so it doesn't stay so uh, great. that jitterbug lip on the front so I don't really need to worry about that. So now the next step here is to uh, heat set this. I have to turn this guy off all the time because it's so loud. Switch back and forth on the one cord. Anyways, next step is to heat set this with the uh, hair dryer. Okay, so now I have heat set that guy. Go ahead and pull these two picks, at least that top one, we'll just pop these guys off, throw them back in the pan, as soon as it's a pain in the butt to get these on and get them off, but that's how we do it. Just gives it that texture, man. Makes it look like real skin. Pretty cool looking. I mean, that's really all it is. I just took a, a paintbrush with uh, this color on the top and a green acrylic on the bottom just to kind of give it that odd color. Might come back and do some dark green on the bottom here. I think I'm going to put some of this on the bottom. I was going to just leave it like that, but I think I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick wrap on this guy. How I just had it has to be the opposite because the pins were on this side and I couldn't paint the bottom. So this paint is heat setted. You have to, have to heat set your paint in between or when you go to wrap you're gonna rip all of your paint off. You're gonna scratch the paint up, and it'll it'll come off. I've done it before, and it's not fun. Then you gotta redo everything. Get that nice and tight so it's up against that paint. Now I'm just gonna throw some green into the gun. An airbrush. Heat set that and then took that wrap off. Give her a nice heat set. That guy's pretty much done. My frog 
<clears throat> and uh, what I'm doing on the back here, you may see those two little uh, eye eyelets. I'm going to be attaching two little small willow blades on the back here. And those two small willow blades will hit and clack on each other as this bait moves through the water. And they'll be on little spinners. So, uh, yeah. Should work out. I don't know. I'm just kind of messing around, experimenting with some stuff here. So, is what it is. I'm going to let that guy completely dry. And then I'm going to do some details on it with acrylics. And next, we're going to jump onto this guy. And I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a bluegill pattern on this guy. Right in the house real quick to go grab this guy to show you guys the paint job that I'm about to put onto this other bait. Got that color shift blue right there. And the orange I use is, uh, it's not Createx. It's the Tamiya color. It's a Japanese uh, airbrush paint. And it is really good. It's very thick. And if it's warm out, you got to thin it a little bit. But that orange is the best orange that I found. I tried using a bunch of the Createx oranges and it just didn't fit my liking. I don't like to have to go and put white on the orange a lot of the times before I hit it up. Like the um, transparent paints, I got to put white below them to let it actually like pop. This stuff just pops. It doesn't matter what color you put it on. So This little dude, I almost want to keep this guy for myself. This guy is number four. 41 only a 41st bait that I've made Get the glass eyes on it this thing kicks butt I'm about to drill the holes for the tail I got the little spots marked out to drill it so I'll set that guy up top here this dragonfly bait that I'm building also is ready to have all the holes drilled so it will stay out here and I'll drill these holes in a second Let's just finish this guy up. You guys might have seen this guy already. And I uh, really want to take this guy out and toss it just to go see how it swims. I don't know. I just I like to make weird stuff like this sometimes. I've seen I've seen so many fish chasing things in the water. It's like if a big bass was to see a small bass chasing a duck, you'd think that big bass, its instinct would be like, I'm just going to go take this guy or take the meal from this guy. You know what I mean? And if a big, big, big bass comes up, it's got three hook spots. So you probably end up getting a big one on this guy. I'm going to toss this. What I want to do here, I haven't been able to get out much. I want to um, want to go to one of my local spots and test all these baits out. There's a spot over in Folsom that has really clear water. And I think I might go test the baits out there I made a, a stick for my GoPro that I could use underwater like a little jig thing but uh, I just haven't been able to get out to use it anyways we're gonna get to painting this next bait Also so light airbrush is pushing the room. Wicked silver base. still does it.
We've got the silver on, and we have the fluorescent yellow on. And the next step is to do this uh, folk art color shift. It's like a turquoise colored color shift. And that's how you get that a little bit on the back. Did a couple baits recently where I, I covered up too much of that, and I think I kind of ruined those paint jobs and kind of bummed out about it. But it's all steps and processes and how to learn how to do this. So this stuff is so thick it has to get a little bit of a reducer or it will not go through the airbrush. So we're going to reduce this real quick, spray this up, and show you guys what it looks like. Now with this stuff, I like to do like two or three layers of it, so I got a heat set in between this and do another layer or two. Alright, so I was uh, wrapping this and the garbage truck went by, it was really loud, so I just cut that clip out. And uh, so now I got this guy wrapped, I'm going to throw some sepia in the airbrush and I'm going to hit this with some sepia. We got this guy heat set with the hair dryer. Now I can pop off the clips. My little holder tray here. Pop this guy up and off. Show you what you look like. So I learned in the past, putting this stuff on, if you don't heat set it, before you pull this off, you're going to peel the paint and it's not going to stay in the pattern. You want to dry the paint while it's still in the pattern before you pull the back off. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can see where I'm going with this here. Oh, I just realized that I used the actual green on this one. That's the difference in the color there. I guess I wasn't paying attention. So on this bluegill, little mini guy here, I used the opaque light green. And then on this guy, you can see the difference in the color. You guys tell me, what do you think looks better, the color shift or the dark green? I think they both look good. That dark green is pretty cool though. I like that color shift because it goes green to when it comes down on the sides there it looks almost like a greenish like darker green all right so the next step with this guy would be oh throw some orange on the uh, belly here throw some orange on the belly and then i will detail out the sides here with some paint brushes so let's do that
All right, guys. So I spent my morning watching Marlon Bates building uh, the creek chub bait that he built, and it's really awesome. So I think I'm going to do something that he did on his bait, and I'm going to throw some pearlized white over some of this and see what it comes out looking like with this uh, different scale pattern stuff that I have here. So let's see what this looks like. Looks like kind of hard to see. Just give it a little bit more scale pattern. So when you look at it straight on, you get the color, and as you come in the light you get that silver reflective same thing on the top just looks like a little bit of a scale pattern mixed in with the uh, the colors pretty cool now I'm going to do the gills with a paintbrush and, and um, Attach the eyeballs and let it sit for a day and then clear coat it. So let's do that. Let's, uh, next step. Alright guys, so for this part, I just got my old paintbrush and a little bit of sepia here. I'm just going to come along right along the gill. On the inside, or the top side. Just give it a little bit of a highlight. Carry that line a little bit. So it'd help if I had the camera on the bait. I don't always try to get these lines completely straight because in nature and on fish and stuff, things aren't always exactly perfect. So it doesn't have to be exact. It's just a little bit of detail to uh, highlight that cut there. come back and do a little fin right here with the airbrush uh, I'm not quite sure yet so let's let that dry we'll do the other side and then I'll finish up and show you how I just got to uh, number my baits and sign them too so I might as well do this once since I have this paint out this one will be good old number 42 A little bit of mess up on the orange right there from the clip, so I will just do my signature right over that. Take out that little bit of imperfection. Little signature on there, and we'll let those gills dry up. I'll throw the next color on it. Next color here. Let's put a drop on here. Some red. What am I gonna do with that? brush, sent it down a little bit, make sure there's not too much coming off the brush, 
Just go right along the outside of that sepia. Give it some red. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to be just enough. A little bit of red there so the bass can see it. Much right there, so I'll just give it a little bit of a wipe. <clears throat> Not too bad. Do the other side and heat set that guy. Move on. All right, got the gill plates on and everything. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and throw some fins on this guy using the stencil I cut out. What I do is I go online and I find pictures of fish and I will just use this clear plastic like this. You can see through it when it's brand new and you can stick it up to like the computer screen or TV screen and uh, get the size of the fish, however the size you want with like Photoshop and then uh, once you got the size you want you just trace it on there and cut it out with a uh, razor blade pretty simple this is just a piece from a uh, bait package so that's all it is and then I cut the little fin slots too so you do the outline and then the fins and we'll do that real quick what I did here is I just came back around that fin Hit it with the paintbrush just to make it pop out a little bit more. Just a little bit. Come on, paintbrush. Look at here. This paintbrush is getting quite a bit old. Bristles are uh, starting to go on me. Okay, just one more little tiny drop. Stuff's drying up pretty quick on me. It is hot out here. Tried to get out here early this morning and get some stuff done before it got too hot. So I stop bumping the camera. Just did that little bit of uh, sepia back over the white to kind of tone it down and make it look so it's not so bright that. I think I'm going to do one more detail on this guy. Take some white. A little drop of white. Make that gill pop. There we go. Don't like those lines to be straight. I like them all crazy. Makes it look cooler. There we have it on the detail, ladies and gentlemen. Just gotta throw some eyes on this once it dries, and I will clear coat it probably show you guys what the finished product is in the next video and
this should be about it for the spray session. Um, a bunch of people that I watch and I have learned from, so I'm going to throw a bunch of the links down below to the people that I watch and that I've uh, learned a bunch of stuff from. There's um, Jen Kervasi, uh, Jekyll Bates. Um, she is awesome. She's one of the best artists out there, I think. And uh, for a bait painter, you don't get much better than Jen Kervasi. There's also uh, Lure Me In uh, on YouTube. They are awesome also. There's a couple others. Uh, Marlin Bates, he builds and paints and does all of his stuff. Marlin Bates. Anyways, my camera died. My battery's dead. And uh, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And tell your friends about us. And if you want some custom stuff made, hit us up on Instagram. Or hit us up here. Or, yeah, Facebook. But Facebook is hiding a lot of my uh, content and comments and stuff. So it's really hard to get a hold and get back to people on Facebook. So try to hit me up on Instagram if you can. Love you guys. Y'all have a good day.